Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about PayPal stock and why I am currently buying PayPal stock. Now at the moment I am a big fan of PayPal down at these sort of prices. Maybe a year ago that wasn't the case, maybe I didn't, I still love the company but not the valuation as much but now I'm really liking the company and the valuation at these sort of prices and the longer that PayPal does stay down at these sort of levels will be better for me because I ideally can pick more shares up uh, even if it downtrends you know below sub 90, I mean that would be absolutely amazing. I don't think it will happen but if it does then that will give me the chance to buy more shares into PayPal and like I said the longer it stays down here the bigger position I can build up in PayPal. Now PayPal in my opinion is a great company while it's at these sort of prices I am able to pick more shares up and ideally I would love to make PayPal uh, at least probably a top five biggest position maybe even a top three biggest position in my portfolio because I'm ultra bullish not it's very rare when you get these opportunities in these sort of big tech a big tech that has you know the revenue growth it has the profit growth the balance sheet that it has um, it's, it's really a top top company and the thing is uh, I've got a couple of points to make before I actually get stuck on to talking about PayPal when you look at PayPal like historically a stock like this doesn't really have too many dips especially the dip that it's currently on sure it was probably due a pullback because the valuation gets got stretched but now in my opinion we're sitting on a massive massive overreaction on the sell-off that was ha that we've had on PayPal and PayPal share price has never seen a correction or a crash like this before you know historically paypal's always been a nice uptrending stock even when you look at cv times or uh, you know 2018 stock market crash even them sort of times you know the st stock really only dipped 10 20 percent not as much as what it has done where we've gone from you know 52 kais of 300 dollars down to 90 dollars right now and don't get me wrong like i said earlier i think that it was potentially due a correction but in my opinion now this has become a massive over correction for this stock and just what i was talking about there is you know these are these sort of big tech stocks these big techs that have really good revenue growth profit growth great balance sheets is very rare for them to sell off you know there's only every a period in time where you get you know every kind of two three years where you get 20 percent dips on these share prices and you don't get these dips more often you know if you ever look at paypal stock chart you know it's very rare for this to happen and when you get these sort of dips in these really uh, big tech that have hardly any dips that are you know putting in amazing numbers quite often history has proven them to be absolutely amazing op buying opportunities and out there right now you know i'm not just talking about paypal you know the likes of facebook for example amazon uh Google, even Google, that's been absolutely smashing earnings at the moment. Google's presenting itself at really good valuations right now, and it's not very often or common that you have these dips in these major big techs uh, that are fantastic companies. And there's a lot to capitalize out there. You know, without a doubt, if I had a bit more money, it wouldn't just be PayPal that I'd be buying at these sort of valuations. I'd be buying a lot of them at the moment. You know, even you know for a long period of time, we've not had this. We've not had these dips in these big techs. It's been basically since the CV time since we've had these sell-offs in these sort of big techs and we're starting to get in the big tech now and there's a lot of buying opportunities out there and I think that PayPal is one of them and like I said you know it's very rare for these deep dips to happen and the big thing I'm starting to see now is you're starting to see the dips in these kind of big techs like the fantastic companies like PayPal for example and the other ones that I mentioned earlier and so many times I hear people that say, oh, I'd love to buy these big techs like your Amazon, Google, Facebook, PayPal that are on sale. And I always, you know, for the last kind of year and a half where I've personally not bought any of these big techs, um, you know, you've started to see, um, you know, I had to wait for a lot of these valuations to come down, which they are doing now. And these are massive buying opportunities. And you saw a lot of people, other people that were like, oh yeah, I'd buy these big techs if they were, if they were to sell off, if they were to have a 10%, 20% dip. But people are being a little bit cautious of buying them right now. And that just shows you, it's very easy to sell, say it on a bull market. But when it does come to the times that you want to buy or, or you should be buying, it does test your men mentality of, oh, do I want to buy? Is there something wrong with that company? And you are never going to get a big tech like PayPal um, at cheap valuations without uh, you know some little problems out there but it's really important to look at them little problems and go okay the, them little problems have maybe affected the share price affected the revenue slightly but is this company still going to be incredibly great for the next few years and it's very much like this you know what I was saying there is that you know you look at the the dip in in PayPal right now you know the there's two big factors that come down to PayPal is first of all one, one of the big dip is that it was uh, over, one of the big factors for why it dipped uh, is because it was overvalued and the other is because they cut their outlook. Now you, you combine the, uh, the overvalued and the outlook cut into this company now and you look at the share price drop off and you go, 
okay, does that share price drop off justify the drop in the share price now? And for me, it's, it doesn't. And I start seeing overreaction and this is where I see a, buy, a massive buying opportunity with PayPal. And that's what we're gonna go through today. So PayPal has been around for quite a few years, but it wasn't until a few years ago when it split a way from eBay that it started realizing its full potential and I think even then it didn't realize the full potential that PayPal had until Square came along and I think Square has even made PayPal develop a lot faster than what it would have done previously but that has worked in its benefit in the fintech space now i think the thing is is there is enough room for the companies like paypal like square there's enough this fintech space is a massive space so there's enough room for both of them i think square is the one that has potentially the bigger reward but um the bigger risk i think paypal has the less reward uh, but i still think um it's, it's a safer play but it still will bring in quite good rewards and paypal is used at checkout by some sellers on their website and also you can transfer money to friends you could even do one of the newer features which is buy now pay later you can do crypto on this platform there's a lot of features coming into this platform so it has a lot of different income streams coming in now for PayPal which is absolutely amazing and when you look at the US App Store on the finance apps and um, Square obviously has the cash app at number one but in number two is PayPal obviously once again, very popular platform where you can buy things on the platform, send money to friends on the platform. And yeah, you're buying the second most popular finance app here. And the big thing is that people sometimes don't realize is that you actually get Venmo with this platform. So Venmo is also owned by PayPal. So picking up PayPal, you actually get the actual PayPal app. And the third most popular US finance app, which is Venmo. And Venmo is basically the answer to Square's cash app. Very popular with the younger audience. And one great thing that's gonna be with Venmo in the next coming few months is they are actually you're actually going to be able to pay on Amazon as well through Venmo which is absolutely amazing you know you think about potentially even if that ends up with you know 0.4% of transactions go through that Venmo that's going to be a massive game changer for Venmo in the next few years so yeah the big thing as well to realize is that obviously the PayPal app now people don't realize how many abilities or the ability that PayPal has to do different things now and also considering that you're not just picking up PayPal you're actually picking up Venmo and another company here it is brilliant now I guess why did PayPal drop so much in share price well the reason why is because of the guidance. The guidance was a little bit short than what was expected. So you can see here, revenue was expected is expected to grow between 15 to 17%. Analysts were expecting 19 to 21%. And that also affected the EPS because you can see here that it was gonna be in the range of uh, four, six, zero to four, seven, five versus the consensus of five, two, six. So you can see here, there's a obviously there's a little bit of a slowdown or a miss on the expectation side of it. Nothing crazy, you know, we're not talking about a massive decrease here but a little bit of a slowdown. But actually when you dig into the earnings call, there was a lot of great information in here. So one of the big problems that PayPal has at the moment is they're currently splitting away from eBay and that is gonna affect their revenue over the, well it's affected it over the last two quarters and it will continue to affect it for two more quarters and then they won't have the hard comparisons with eBay coming out of their numbers. So if you look at the actual company X eBay, which it will do hopefully uh, in the coming few months or next couple of quarters after the tough comps are out of the way x ebay their revenue actually grew at 29 percent on a spot basis for the full year and 22 percent in q4 so if it wasn't for these tough com comps this company was still actually growing over 20 percent, which is absolutely really impressive so this is the effect of the hard comps here there was a other couple of reasons why there was a slowdown but even so with these slowdowns obviously you can see this numbers were still pretty impressive and there was a little bit of a statement here as well talking about more of the effects with eBay moving out of their payment transition here. And um, so if you want a bit more information on that, that is right there. There was also another couple of good points in the earnings call. So buy now, pay later, which PayPal has, which is another hot growing space. So, I mean, you look at the likes of um, Square have obviously bought Afterpay, Klarna, you've also got a firm in this area. PayPal are in this area as well, and you can see here that their actual growth rate was 325% year over year in this segment. And Venmo, which we talked about earlier, which is growing really fast, um, you can see here that in the fourth quarter, that part of the platform was up 80% year over year. So there's a lot of different parts in this platform still growing at a very quick rate for PayPal, which is absolutely amazing. So you can see here that analysts on Simple Wall Street are still fo forecasting pretty decent high teens growth, as well as their profit starting to return after the hit 
of this year. You can see that it is forecast to move back in the right direction. And if you look at the past performance, this company has a very good track record of delivering. Profit margins, um, a little bit all over the place. They jumped up to 22 and now they're down at 16. But still very healthy profit margins uh, and plenty of revenue growth, plenty of profit growth, a track record of delivering on financials, which is great. Financial health wise, same again, um, pretty solid. It's got a 41% debt to equity. Um, it is sitting on a cash of 9.5 billion and debt of 9 billion. So if it really wanted to, it could pay off all its debt, which is absolutely amazing. And going into the actual ownership, one of the really positive signs is when you see your stock fall down so much, is to see insiders coming in and actually buying the shares. And you can see here, there's been a lot of insider buying on this company really, which is a really positive sign. Now going on to the metric side of it, now you'll see here, this is where the stock price got really extended um, around about the March time of 2021. So we've got a forward multiples and trailing multiples. And if we just go on the likes of total enterprise value to revenues, you can see it's down at a free and the lowest it's ever been in the last um, four years is a, about a five so that stands out price to sales ratio same again is a three uh, lowest it's been is a five if we got off total enterprise value to ebitda and um, it's currently a 14 and the lowest it has ever been is 20 and if you look at a normalized earnings that's currently down at a 20 and the lowest it's ever been is a 28 and um, which was uh, during the cv crash and same again, there's loads of different metrics here that you can see this is historic low metrics for so many measurements on this company right now, which uh, is a standout thing. So coming back to the share price, you know, when we look at this big drop in share price and you consider, you know, you look at the metric sell off, how cheap the metrics are, you look at the company, sure, there's a little bit of a hit on the outlook. It's been slowed down slightly, but you know, you're still picking up a company here that's gonna, when these hard, tough comps go out of the way, it's still probably gonna grow you know, near 20%. It's still, at the moment, even with these hard comps, it's still a company that's growing at 15, 17%. It's still, everything's moving in the right direction. So then when you consider that we've gone from you know, $300, we've sold off 67%, you know, if we look at you know, CV times, we're nearly the same prices in the CV dip, or even to then, you know, we're going all the way back to prices of, let's have a look, we keep going, we keep going, March, March 2019, so we consider that PayPal is now back at March 2019 prices. You think, okay, yeah, sure, the outlook was cut a little bit, but does it justify to have this much sell off? And this is for me where you start talking, you notice a company that has had a, over, a massive overreaction here and comes a really good buying opportunity. So you can see there why I think this is a good buying opportunity and why I'm very confident to buy a company that is this quality, this profitable, this revenue growth, good balance sheet. Uh, confident with the insiders buying as well. I'm very happy to make this quite a large position in my portfolio. And when I look at my ambitions, you know, for me, I look for a two to five year range. In that two to five year range, can I get a two X return on my investment? So will I double my return in the next five years? Obviously that would be a very good return, more than likely outperforming the indexes. So can I get a two X return off this stock? This, this stock isn't one of those that you're gonna probably get, you know, a 10 X return on. It's the, because it is a lot safer and a lot bigger, it won't give you that much share price return. But at the same time, I still think, you know, two X return in the next five years would be very, very good. And that would be my target, which is a lot of my targets when I'm investing into, into a company. And when I put in the forecast of revenue growth of 15 to 20%, when I put that profit will increase 10% to 20% every year, when I look and think they are, they are currently buying back shares, they could have potential to increase their profit margins. And also the metric expansion, you know, when we look at the metrics, all the metrics at the moment are trading at the historic lows. You know, even if that comes back to average metrics, you've got the company trading very cheap valuations, very cheap metrics improvement in the profit, share buybacks, and still gonna put in massive profit and revenue growth. And we know if the company increases the profit and revenue over a long period of time, that leads the share price to go up. So for me, I look at this company having a massive overreaction at the moment, and I feel like I can easily make a 2X return off this company in the next five years for sure. So at the moment, that's why I'm very confident to buy PayPal at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button. If you're new, subscribe. That'd be absolutely amazing. If you do want to see more videos from me, I do drop two exclusive videos on Patreon. Uh, link is in the description. Uh, I think I dropped my UK portfolio review yesterday. Uh, should have done it today with the massive jump up that they've had, but hey. Um, so if you do want to join that, link is in the description and I'll see you on the next video.